Welcome to the weekly online service for the Church of England. We're here in St Giles Community Garden in Lincoln, surrounded by the produce which has been growing over the summer and is now ready for harvest. Once an overgrown, derelict space behind the church, this is now a very special asset, a beautiful, peaceful place which many in the community enjoy. I'm Nick and you join me in the store cupboard for the food bank that we run here as a church in Lewisham. Today's service is based around the litany for Rogation Tide and we'll be asking for God's blessing and seeking God's mercy on our care for the land, supply of food and stewarding of resources. We'll also be hearing from a number of people about their work and how these roles, paid and unpaid, are also an act of worship as we care for the creation that God has gifted to us. So let us pray. God, the Father, the Lord of creation, have mercy on us. God, the Son, through whom all things were made, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, who renews the face of the earth, have mercy on us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, creating and saving God, have mercy on us. Remember, Lord, your mercy and your loving kindness towards us. Bless this good earth and make it fruitful. Bless our labour and give us all things needful for our daily lives. Bless the homes of our parishes and all who live within them. Bless our common life and our care for neighbour. Hear us, good Lord. As we begin this service of prayer, let us celebrate the God who created all things and in whom all things hold together.
Hello, my name is Paul Davey. I'm a seventh generation farmer from Lincolnshire. We farm in the Lincolnshire Wolds with a flock of sheep. We, have, we grow a number of different crops from milling wheat through to yellow linseed. The sort of thing that you might find in a multi-seeded batch loaf. Each year we get the opportunity for the farm to almost have a rebirth, to reinvent the way we farm and change um, and embrace those changes, be they adapting to the weather or be they um, looking at alternative cropping and alternative farming systems. 2019 through to 2020 um, is, is, is not only a time of great change for our industry with our changing relationship with the European Union, but also it's been a year of great extremes with, with, the, with the weather. This year we have the, the, the smallest area of winter wheat in the United Kingdom uh, for a generation um, and possibly the smallest harvest for a generation as well. The soils we work with are our greatest resource. We take the time to preserve those as best we can with modern thinking. We pray that as farmers we continue to look for the most sustainable answers to help with feeding the planet and the support that our communities, friends, our customers are able to give us in the future. For all cities, towns and villages, and for their well-being and prosperity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the rural economy and for its regeneration, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who tend the countryside and preserve its order and beauty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all farms, all who work them, and for the whole farming industry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who make farming policy, and for all with authority in government, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Joe, who is head of Farm Assured at the RSPCA, reads from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 to 8. A reading from the prophet Micah, the requirement of the Lord. With what should I come before the Lord and bow down before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Hello, my name's Shane Tyler and I'm the Group Compliance Director for the Fresca Group. We own a number of businesses around the UK and supply fruit and veg to the retail accounts. Um, today I'm standing in the fields of one of our businesses, DGM Growers, um, who are a proud business based in Saracen's Head in South Lincolnshire and we're in the rural Lincolnshire flats now. There's been the number of challenges over the years but 2019 and 2020 are proving to be quite difficult with Brexit impending um, and potential labour shortages, but also what we're facing with COVID-19. There's a lot of vulnerable people currently in our, in, in our industry, in communities, and it's what we're trying to do to, to help them and make sure that they're best placed in our industry. Farm labour in our industry is typically an industry which is extremely variable in the amount of work, availability of work. It's truly seasonal and that doesn't suit everybody. So we, we tend to have quite sporadic labour shortages or over labour which creates vulnerabilities for workers in our supply chain. Um, and we need to have a, a sustainable supply chain that can help facilitate those people within it. Because we have vulnerable people, we need to start looking out a little bit more for the people around us, not just in the fields, but in all areas of rural community. If we just took a moment to care for the person that's next to us on the train, 
next to us in a shop and just looking out to ensure that we're doing whatever we can to make sure that their welfare is being catered for. And that's something that we can go all do. Um, it's certainly something that I now try and do as much as I can. Earlier this year, we worked with the CLER Initiative, the National Crime Agency, and the Gangmasters and Labour Abuse Authority to recognise that there are some people in our industry that are vulnerable. And we developed an app called the Work, Farm Work Welfare app. It's something that you can download. It's something that you can use um, that will help you understand what farm work life is like, what the rights of workers, workers are, and should, should there be anything that gives any, anybody any concerns, you can report a concern that will then be dealt with by the authorities totally confidentially that could help the welfare of a fellow human. For me, there's many things that we could do to help um, uh, those that are vulnerable in our society. We probably could, one thing that we could pray for is for those authorities that are helping tackle those that are taking it upon their lives to exploit these people. Businesses like ours don't exploit people, but we have to deal with those that choose to do so. And I would very much appreciate if we could pray to help the authorities tackle that. For a blessing on our land, we pray. Hear us, good Lord. For healthy crops and abundant harvests, we pray. Hear us, good Lord. For the care and welfare of animals and for the veterinary profession, we pray. Hear us, good Lord. For seasonable weather, we pray. Hear us, good Lord. For protection from blight, pestilence and disease, we pray. Hear us, good Lord. For those engaged in agricultural research, we pray. Hear us, good Lord. For the ministry of your church in rural areas, we pray. Hear us, good Lord. For parts of the world where the harvests have failed, we pray. Hear us, good Lord. For charities and aid agencies and overseas development, we pray. Hear us, good Lord. And now we hear Simon Parks, Managing Director of Kid Transport, read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 22 to 34. Luke 12, 22 through to 34. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear, for life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown in the, into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink. And do not keep worrying, for it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things and your father knows you, that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that, that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Hi, I'm Simon Park. I'm the Managing Director of Kids Transport 
uh, which is a logistics company based in Lancashire. The haulage industry as a whole is used to challenges. We're quite good at it. We get challenges all the time. We meet them head on day after day. Uh, 95 to 80, 98 percent of all products in this of everything we have in this country has been delivered by truck that's including your house that's including the street outside your house the pipeline the utilities to that house we're used to challenges uh the biggest two challenges at the moment are obviously brexit and covid um and they've delivered the biggest challenge which is the uncertainty that uh this country is going up through at the moment people aren't certain what's going to happen in the future they're not spending as much businesses aren't going for it like they would not like we would hope them to do so um so at the moment the uncertainty is one of the biggest challenge we have in the in the industry at the moment we tend to try and develop our staff uh, help our staff grow beyond working for us uh, to achieve their goals whether they want to become solicitors whether they want to become doctors whatever they want to do we try and push them onto that uh, that way if we can uh, improve their education, uh, improve their, not just finances, uh, but we want them to thrive. We don't want our, our staff just to survive and just to make do. Uh, that includes faultless staff. We've had all sorts of weird and wonderful people come through there. Uh, and some people have gone on to achieve great things within the warehouse, which, uh, which is what we like to see. So I would like to see us in a position where we can support that and continue that and to have this, the time and the skills and the lack of pressure to deliver that kind of thing for our our staff. Uh, as an industry as a whole, um, I think just to pray against this uncertainty that we have. Uh, the reading in Luke is very apt at the moment. Um, we don't need to worry. We can just trust God. But uncertainty does bring that kind of worry, ironically. In my study, I have a photo of my grandfather, Reverend Canon Hobbs, who for many years was a vicar in the Cotswolds. Amongst farming communities, communities that he had a great love for and a great connection to through a mutual love of land and agriculture. Now this photo pictures him in cassock and surplus in a small rural church, blessing a plough. The plough is centred front and centre in the nave. And you see, one thing that he recognised that others do, and certainly this service today does also, is something that is all too often overlooked. That is, that God is a God not just of Sunday, but a God of every day. He is a God of ploughshares, of balance sheets and supply chains. He is a God of stacked shelves and taxi ranks and city hall. God is a God of rest but he's also a God of work and of finding flourishing from field to fork and everywhere in between. But the truth is we live in a world where trillions of dollars in assets and goods and services are traded daily, impacting everyone around the globe from the wealthiest to the poorest communities and individuals. All our lives are shaped by trade and business and our work, whether, it, whether it's the cost of fish in the market or the ability to fill our car with fuel or whether it's the trust that we can place in financial markets and our pensions. Our work is and has always been a core part of our society. It's no surprise then that 45 of the 52 parables of Jesus are set in the marketplace. Jesus calls us to be active ambassadors for his glory and his gospel in everything we do. The question is that when our work not only impacts our lives but the lives of everyone throughout the whole value chain from production to consumption, when our work impacts whole communities and livelihoods, when our work impacts the planet, how does God call us to live out our Christian faith as we till the land, either literally or metaphorically? In 1970, the economist Milton Friedman wrote, the social responsibility of business is to increase its profits. 
In that moment, he convinced the world that business, the business of our work, was about maximising financial return and importantly, doing it for shareholders. And in so doing, a co total commodification of creation has transformed the human and non-human world, often as assets for mere exploitation. The earth has become units and humanity becomes capital and over time our worship and our work become detached from the ways of God and become the ways of incessant economic growth. A few years ago I was speaking with a Christian oil executive who fervently explained the cost-benefit analysis that for him justified an oil sl a slick in the Niger Delta. Recently, I was with a CEO of a clothing firm who justified their employment practices in Bangladesh because it enabled him to maximise profits and then give away some. In fact, just this week, I was interviewed by the slave trader Edward Colston, who trafficked tens of thousands of Africans so that he could generate and maximise financial return. The truth is that whilst Friedman might have given us a language, we have been wrestling with the relationship between our, the work of our hands and the worship of God since almost the dawn of time. What, sh with what shall I come before the Lord? We read in our passage in Micah, don't we? With what shall I come before the Lord? Shall I come before him with, with burnt offerings? With calves a year old? With thousands of rams or, or with 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn? We're hearing him say, shall I worship the Lord through the things our world values the very most? But instead, we see a call for a change of perspective. We experience a paradigm shift. Our daily worship is neither defined through financial value nor commodity. God does not value the same things we have come to value in the world, but rather the Lord requires of you to do justice, to love kindness and walk humbly with God. And I love that. I love that image. And I don't think it's accidental either of us walking with God the same way that God walked through the garden and blessed us with our first work to name the animals before we lost our way. As we worship, we align ourselves with the creator. And as we walk with him, we partner with him in his creative work. Our work and our worship are inextricably connected to the mission of God in his kingdom. Now, whilst of course money is needed, yes, the fundamental value of our work, contrary to Friedman, is not found in maximising financial return. But rather, it's found in the worshipful call to participate with God in creating a kingdom in which there is no more pain or tears, in which equality reigns, in which the planet thrives, in which food is sustainable. We are called to be paintbrushes in the artist hand of God. It's so clearly put in Luke. What you value, you worship. So may your work, our work, be as worship. May it be an investment in the unfailing things the unfailing treasure, the unfailing glory of God in heaven. For our daily bread, we pray to you, O Lord. For all who work the land to bring us our food in due season, 
we pray to you, O Lord. For all who fish the rivers, lakes and seas, we pray to you, O Lord. For all who process foods and prepare them for distribution and sale, we pray to you, O Lord. For all supermarkets and shops and for all who work in them, we pray to you, O Lord. For those who distribute food to those in need, we pray to you, O Lord. Hi, my name is Bill Judos. I'm an SSM, the Stoke-on-Trent team, and I work for Sainsbury's. The best thing about my job is that I'm based in a supermarket, which is the centre of the community. I have 45,000 people a week come through our doors, and I'm there, right in the middle of it, doing God's work. During this pandemic, it's been tough in the supermarket industry, with things like social distancing. At the beginning, we're starting again now with panic buying. It's put a lot of strain on everyone. Because of the self-isolating, we miss seeing a lot of our regular elderly customers. We quite often did not see anyone else unless they visited Sainsbury's. They became part of our family. Colleagues were obviously concerned for their safety and asking other customers for news of their friends. Mostly it was good news. But sometimes colleagues would ask for prayers for someone who was really, really ill. Another impact has been that I was also more in demand than ever for prayers and to conduct funerals. Trying to explain where God is in this pandemic to people who have just lost a loved one can be difficult. But I am still humbled when someone comes to me and says their loved ones has asked if that vicar from Sainsbury's can do their funeral. One particular funeral I conducted was of a very well-liked customer who upset some of the cashiers because they could not go to the service to say goodbye. Sometimes people forget that we are not just someone who works in a supermarket, but people who really care about our 45,000 friends. I would ask you all to pray for everyone in the retail sector who are on their own front line who are often forgotten about during this time. Ask God for their safety and patience that they can go home safely each day to their loved ones. Amen. Hello, I'm Sharon and I've worked for Sainsbury's for over 15 years. I started Sainsbury's when my children were little to fit round their school times and their bedtimes. Um, I love working with the team that I'm working with. I, I feel that we work well. And we look out for one another and I feel that I make a difference. And I can come in, I know what I'm doing and I can be part of making it a success. As staff, we work really hard to get things on the shelf as soon as possible. As soon as it comes in so that people have, are able to get what they need. And then there's the concern of working in an environment where we are exposed to the virus. So if you're a single parent or you've got caring responsibilities um, or people at home vulnerable, it is a worry in case you take it back. And there's the worry of childcare. So if a child has to isolate at home, then you have to take time off work. So if you could pray for that, that would be great. And we miss seeing our regular customers um, who are hopefully at home shielding. So prayers would be really um, beneficial for our mental health and our physical health. As you go around the store, you could pray, or if you're passing in the car, just being nice to staff, being kind and saying thank you makes a, a big difference. Um, we've had customers say thank you for what you're doing and that's really brightened our day. Send a card to the store, to our managers or to staff saying thank you and that you're thinking of us. We work really hard to provide a good service during a very difficult time. If you could pray for protection for us, for our families for peace and protection and a smooth service, especially over Christmas when people are stressed and trying to get all their Christmas shopping done. Um, if you could pray that we can provide a good service and that 
people come in and find peace. Um, protection for our vulnerable customers too, who need to shop and they're probably coming out of isolation now, that people won't panic by for kindness and respect, that we can deliver as smooth a service as possible. Pray a blessing when you're in store, pray a blessing for staff and for customers, or if you're in the car passing, pray a blessing for the stores that you pass. Um, that would make a huge difference. Thank you. For the world of work in all its diversity, hear us, good Lord. For the right ordering of work in times of technological change, hear us, good Lord. For all service industries that provide for our daily needs, hear us, good Lord. For the safety of those making deliveries and stocking warehouses, Hear us, good Lord. For the industry and workplaces of our own communities, hear us, good Lord.
Holy God, earth and air and water are your creation and every living thing belongs to you. Have mercy on us for our sinful exploitation of your world. Grant us the will and the courage to live with simplicity, to consume with integrity and to share with generosity. Forgive our past mistakes and send us your spirit with wisdom for the present, courage to bear the cost of change and vision for that future to which you call us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello, I'm Jo Bailey, Head of Farming for RSPCA Assured. We are the only farm assurance scheme in the UK totally dedicated, committed to improving farm animal welfare. I love my job. It enables me to fulfil my purpose in life, which is to help improve the lives of farmed animals and to raise awareness and standards of welfare, not just in the UK, but globally. It's been a tough and challenging year. All of us have been affected directly or indirectly by COVID. But through these difficulties, the worries, the stress and disruption to our personal and working lives, kindness has grown to our neighbours, our communities, key workers like farmers who work so hard to put food on our plates. Please pray for our farmers, for their health and their strength, that they not only survive, but they continue to thrive post COVID and Brexit. For those that are responsible for livestock, may compassion fill their hearts and may their hands and voices be gentle. Please pray that the respect that has grown through lockdown towards key workers, the environment, wildlife and all sentient beings continues and that we remain kind to all kind. Thank you. So as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. It has been good to worship with you here in St Giles Community Garden, surrounded by the fruits of this season. Today we've been reminded of our dependence on each other, on the land, and ultimately on the source of all our life, God, our creator, redeemer and sustainer. We've become more aware of how many people work to provide our daily food, and we've been urged to act justly, so that we also might be a blessing to others. We hope that the stories we've heard from people today might give us each pause for thought as we lift our forks at lunch or dinner. More than that, we hope that they've inspired you to think about your work, paid or unpaid, and the role we each have in our stewarding of creation. I'm now going to hand back to our supermarket self-supporting minister, Bill, for our final blessing. May God who closed the lilies, closed the lilies of the fields and feeds the birds of the air, who leads the lamb to pasture and the deer to water, who multiplied loaves and fishes and change water into wine. Lead us and feed us, and change us to reflect the glory of our Creator, now and through all eternity. And the blessing. Tend the earth, care for God's creations, and bring forth the fruits of righteousness. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>